Welcome to our video. Hong Kong democracy activist describes how Chinese government targets critics in exile. I would like to focus on the PBS report, the 28th of July, 2023. For over 20 years, it was understood that Hong Kong was part of China, but it ran its own affairs under what was known as one country, two systems. Hong Kong residents had many freedoms that mainland Chinese did not. That all started to change four years ago as Beijing cracked down on pro-democracy activists. Now the once freewheeling capitalist haven resembles a police state run by the Communist Party. And as John Yang tells us, Beijing is trying to extend that crackdown overseas. Jeff, for several years now, Hong Kong has been cracking down on dissent at home. A strict new security law was implemented in 2020 after nearly a year of pro-democracy protest. Since then, more than 260 people have been arrested, nearly all independent media shut down, and opposition candidates disqualified from elections. Now China is trying to extend the reach of its repression by targeting critics living in exile. They've issued eight arrest warrants for scholars, pro-democracy activists, and former lawmakers no longer living in Hong Kong. Elmer Yuan is named in one of those warrants. He's a Hong Kong businessman turned online commentator now living in the United States. Mr. Yuan, the government accuses you of subversion, colluding with foreign forces, and they put a six-figure reward uh, for your <laughs> arrest. How, does that, how do you feel? How do you react to that? Um, I think uh, I'm very happy because it means that uh, I really touch on the nerve, uh, their weakest point. The whole thing about the... Uh, uh, the Communist Party is they claim that they represent all the people and uh, now I'm trying to form a elected Hong Kong Parliament outside of Hong Kong and uh, this is making them very nervous because it's really the power of the people organized and uh, this is communist they really they never had the support of the people and in fact they have hi, they've hijacked all the um, human rights and the democracy from the from the Chinese people and the Hong Kong people. Why do you think they're going after people overseas, exiles? They are trying to reach out, have their police station in many free countries, but they don't have the control as in Hong Kong or in China. So the result is they want to scare us. And they do this kind of tactic all the time. Now, only now, people start paying, paying attention. Uh, sort of on that point, I know that the Hong Kong police have detained uh, members of your family, I believe your uh, daughter and son. Um, wh what do you, what's your response to that? <clears throat> Again, they are trying to scare me. Totally illegal. Um, uh, in fact, you know, what I'm doing is uh, based on the uh, Universal Declaration of Independence. We have the right to, to be elected, to elect, to vote. And uh, it's also in the Chinese constitution and the Hong Kong basic law. This is all rights given to us to form our own government and, uh, and autonomy. So uh, they try to uh, detain my kids, try to scare me and uh, get me to stop. I wouldn't be surprised if they detained them for a longer period of time, like, like what they did to the two Michaels in Canada. I've seen reports that, that quote your daughter-in-law saying publicly that she no longer speaks to you, telling the Chinese officials who've detained her that. Why do you think that is? I think she has to say everything, anything, just to be able to leave Hong Kong. Otherwise, Hong Kong and China is one big prison. Uh, they don't allow people to go, you know, to, to leave. There are a lot of people like uh, Martin Lee, Anson Chan, and also the uh, Cardinal Sin. They, they don't have freedom even to leave Hong Kong. Earlier today, a Hong Kong court rejected the government's request to ban uh, Glory to Hong Kong, which has become a protest anthem. Were you surprised by that? I'm quite surprised. Uh, it seems like uh, they don't have total control of the judiciary system. The judges, uh, most of them are foreign, and uh, they are still, uh, they still finally like to rule by, uh, by law. On the other hand, the uh, U.S. Congress has been threatening sanction on those national security uh, judges. So that's why they may be scared. Once there's a sanction, they won't be able to travel to the free countries. 
do you think this could be a sign of that, they'll, that these judges will defy the government in other areas? I think uh, they will. They have to choose either they resign or they rule according to the law, because uh, the whole world, world is watching how they rule. And uh, I believe that uh, now they have to consider. And uh, it looks like there is some um, recovery because they understand this cannot go on. I think even Xi Jinping understands it cannot go on. It's really hurting the Hong Kong economy. We, we supply 70% of their foreign income. Uh, you spoke earlier about forming a, 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 le a, a parliament in exile. How's that effort going? What are you doing to do that? We are forming a Hong Kong parliament, and then I have, uh, we've invented a mobile online voting system, very secure, so that people, even in Hong Kong or outside Hong Kong, can vote online without being detected or being traced. So uh, we're doing quite well. We hope to have an election by the end of the year and uh, elect our first uh, member of the parliament. And their first duty will be to, uh, to draft the constitution for Hong Kong. Have you, are you able to communicate with uh, not only your family, but uh, other people in Hong Kong who may be sympathetic uh, to, to your position? Um, all, most of the phone calls are tapped. So <laughs> I, 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 I communicate mostly with Hong Kongers outside Hong Kong. So you, I, I'm wondering if you have any sense of what, what life in Hong Kong is like right now. Oh, I'm very familiar. We, of course, we watch all their news is uh, censored and uh, controlled by the communists, all the medias in Hong Kong, whether it's TV or newspaper or magazines. But we do have, of course, we have friends traveling back and forth. A lot of Hong Kong people are still traveling, and I meet them all over the world. I'm in Sydney, London, Vancouver, San Francisco, everywhere. So I'm very up to date. It's like a, it's like a police state. And uh, um, uh, more le the, this national, national security law is more or less like a martial law. Elmer Yuen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your interview.